Welcome back to this week's Take 5. A uh, bit of good news there. We are still having the European Congress. It's going to be a virtual event. This is actually the 20th year that ARSA has been putting on the European Congress. I've had the opportunity to attend uh, numerous of those and participate in those over the years. They're fabulous events. This year we've got a great lineup of keynote speakers, some really interesting sessions, some panel discussions. And perhaps the highlight that I'm really interested in is on the last day, we're actually going to have a worldwide virtual club tour featuring some of the top clubs around the world and a lot of uh, the different uh, models, if you will. Also, thanks to all of you that recently completed the member survey about ARSA's publications and products so we can evaluate and uh, have some feedback on what your interests lie in and where you perceive value to be. Thanks also to Club Intel, one of the great industry consulting groups that donated their time and their expertise to help collect this information. Ursa greatly appreciates that. I've mentioned several times that I've developed headlight teams here at Ursa, and the headlight teams basically consist of at least one board member, at least one Ursa staff member, and then a collection of industry experts that have knowledge in a particular area. And their task essentially is to explore, evaluate, and then come back uh, to myself and the URSA team, including the staff and board of directors, with recommendations and advice on how we might modify all these different aspects uh, of your association as we go forward. And these are about finance, it's about technology, it's about publications, it's about the URSA Foundation. It's about the ILC, now renamed to the National Health and Fitness Alliance. So anyway, there's a dozen of those teams working really hard to make sure that we have the best information possible and the best guidelines to sort of reimagine the industry, uh, as I've said numerous times. One of those is a task force that's been commissioned to actually look at a safe mark for clubs that would establish those clubs that are willing to commit and pledge their support toward maintaining a safe environment, not only by... URSA standards, but also by CDC standards and also the local uh, ordinances and recommendations depending on where they are geographically. Another outcome of these headlight teams that was formed around getting information back on relationships we have with suppliers is that we're now going to be launching as of not this week, but next week. Uh, many of you will be getting invitations if you're a supplier about a state of URSA town hall meeting uh, where we're going to answer a lot of your questions. I'm going to give a little bit of information about what's going on here at URSA and then we're going to let uh, each of you in the audience, you know, formulate questions and I'll try and answer for you as well. Um, but that's something that was asked for and we want to deliver that as soon as possible. I also mentioned last week that we're in the process of formulating a medical health and science advisory council. That's underway. Invitations and recruitment is going on as we speak. Uh, this is going to be an outstanding group, uh, and I look forward to sharing uh, the people that are on that with you very soon. Another bit of good news, the Health and Relief Act 2020 bill has been getting great support. Thanks to all of you that have already participated. So far, there's already been over 3,000 individuals that have taken action, and there's been almost 10,000 letters sent to Congress uh, on our behalf again, to get some relief for our industry, which has been battered so heavily by the pandemic. We're also intensely focused even more than in the past around research, particularly related to COVID and how safe clubs can be. So we're working not only domestically, with we have three or four different fronts and groups that we're working with to develop some more research around this topic. We're also reaching out and uh, doing some research globally with some of our partners around the world. If you need information about some of the research that's out there to help tell the story that clubs are safe, then please reach out uh, to us and we can direct you to all those research programs that are going on. That's a couple of great examples of how some clubs are taking it to their members and creating this message or SACO Sport and Fitness up in Maine and Newtown Athletic Club in Pennsylvania. They've taken the check-in data that they have at their specific club and the fact that there's been no transmission of COVID or contract tracing back to their clubs and they're promoting that front and center, uh, as you can see in this video. Some great examples of how to make that really meaningful in your own situation, in your own backyard. Some sad news, or unfortunate news, I should say. Coming out of Canada, there's a spin class gym in Canada in the city of Hamilton that's had an outbreak, unfortunately, here in the last couple of days. I believe there's 49 cases traced back to this gym. 
Of course, that's getting a lot of uh, publicity about, uh, once again, that gyms are unsafe. That's sad news for us that uh, we continue to have these things rise, but this probably won't be the last, of course. The good news is the majority of the research that's out there are still pointing to the fact that clubs are relatively safe. As long as the protocols are followed and the standards of sanitation and cleanliness and air filtration are in place, we're seeing very little occurrence of COVID transmission in clubs, not only here in the United States from some of the data that we've been collecting, but also independent sources like the Colorado State of Health Department and the Department of Health in Louisiana. You can go to their websites and actually see where the contract tracing has pointed to as far as cases of COVID. And fortunately, health clubs are way, way down the list. And in actuality, in Colorado, there's been zero cases reported compared to other types of facilities that uh, the public might visit. So we're excited about that. And then there's also global research, of course. The other countries are going through things similar. So there are studies going on in Norway, in Oslo, in New Zealand. Uh, we're on top of that, and we're bringing that information here to the United States as well, again, to help build this narrative that uh, clubs are safe, and that's true. As long as the protocols, the safety measures are followed, there's a very slight chance of individuals collecting or contracting COVID in clubs. That's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.